Already? Okay, so now we're going to look at um, the translation test. Remember from earlier, if you have a restriction in translation, then you have a facet restriction. What I mentioned earlier, if you put your fingers onto the articula, almost like a, like a recorder, and if you were to slowly push one side, let's say the right side, you push the right side to the left side, and then let's say you choose, uh, this, this is C2, say C3 and C4, and so your fingertips are roughly on C3, and you translate from the right side to the left, then the right facet has to what? Close. And then the left facet has to open. Yeah. So if you translate that way, and it does not want to translate from the right side to the left side, then you have two choices. Either the right facet does not want to what? Close. Close. Or the left facet does not want to open. Happy with that for a minute? Yeah. So what you're going to do is literally lightly palpate the articula and then translate from right to left and left to right. And if it feels okay as in it translates one way and the other way, leave it alone. Go to the one below, do the same test again. If that's okay, go to the one below until you find one side doesn't want to move in compared to the other side. Yeah? Let me just have a go on, uh, we know that with Claudia that the top part in particular, if I come on to, there's a C2 there, so what I want to try to do is translate C2 on C3, okay? So, but then it's very subtle in terms of how we do this. If you watch how I do this, so the neck is in a relatively neutral position, and I'm literally just going to, to translate one side, translate the other side. You see how subtle that is? So I'm translating this way. This way is harder or stiffer, if that's the right word, going to the right when it is going to the left. The patient might be able to feel that as well. Okay, so that way is easier than this way. It doesn't seem to want to translate to the right. But going to the left, translation seems to be okay. So going this way, it means the facet closes on the right and opens on the left. But going the other way, either the right side doesn't want to open or the left side doesn't want to close. Okay. Now, if I slowly tilt my patient's neck into flexion, I am encouraging the facets to do what? Open. To open. So for instance, if I now translate, okay, and it's still stiff or even stiffer, which it is, that way is okay. So it means that if I'm flexing, I'm trying to open, okay, as in, let's say the right side for a minute. Now when I translate that way, if that right side doesn't want to open, it must be fixed closed on the right. Right. Okay. So flexion, I'm trying to do that. If it's already open, it will want to glide. Okay, because it's already open, it'll glide. If it doesn't want to glide, it must mean that the right side is fixed in a closed position. I normally call it FR. What that means is is flexion is opposite because I'm pushing from the left, but it's actually the right side I'm testing. Does that make sense? So I call it flexion opposite. And what that means is, so if I flex and I'm pushing with my left hand to the right, so I'm pushing on the left, but it's the right side I'm testing to see if it opens. So in this case, I know that the facet is fixed, closed on the right hand side. Now, let's say that movement was easy, okay? But now if I take it from neutral into a slight extension and now glide across, and that doesn't want to glide. Okay, that's actually okay there. Okay, so now I'm testing with the facets closed. If it was restricted going to the right side while she's in extension, it means that the left facet is fixed oh. open yeah. on the left side because it doesn't want to close. So I call that E 
S, extension, same side. So if we're extension and I'm pushing from the left and it's restricted on the left, it doesn't want to close, so it's fixed um, in an open position. And if I flex my patient and it's restricted, then it has to be fixed, closed on the opposite side, which will be on the right. 